What's going on, everybody? It's Eric from RuleTheWasteland.com. I'm going to be doing my battle box opening for this month. I'm going to wait a few minutes, a few seconds anyways, for a few people to come in. This one is an interesting, they've started a new box design, it looks like, where they actually have it printed all over it as well. And it's heavy. So I'm excited to see what it is. So. As usual, I'll bust this open, go through all the things inside of it, and try to guess what their theme is. Their theme isn't usually too like strict or um, you know controlling what the contents are, but they do tend to have a general theme to the contents of their box. And I usually try to guess what it is. What's up, Frank, Glenn, Caleb? Can't wait for yours. Yeah, it's cool. This one is What's up, Doug as well. This one is heavy. So I'm gonna grab my little razor knife. But like I've said before, I don't like to use my actual knives simply because with tape and stuff like that, it just, you don't need them. And if anything, it dulls them up, gums them up unnecessarily. So let's see what we got. This one's nice and easy to open. Let me do this way I can not get too much block your guys' vision. Whoa. About to knock all my stuff over. All right, we got seven people, it's good enough. Battle box. Let's see what we got. I didn't get all the tape. Amateur. Amateur hour over here. This is a high tech piece of survival equipment. I think it's a battle box exclusive. Ooh, check this out. First thing I'm going to pull out. What's up? Look at this. That is awesome. It says Old Army on it. Really cool. I don't want to cut myself taking this thing off. Fairly sharp. Excellent. Old style shaped uh, axe head, it looks like kind of. Battle axe, I like it. It's not super long, as you can see, it's only about three feet long. And it's actually, the handle is incredibly uh, lightweight. Nice, shiny. I like it. Cool, man. That's why this was so heavy. It's a full blown axe in it. I can dig it. It has a very flat back, so you could use it as a hammer if you need to. Hammer some tent stakes in, things like that. Pretty cool. Definitely stoked about that. I don't actually have – I have like an old splitting mall, but I don't have a, um axe like that. Patriot Seeds Urban Gardening. This is something that people were mentioning a few times on our latest Prepper Trifecta live stream is collecting seeds. Gimli cosplay complete, minus the giant beard and about, and plus about a foot and a half of height. Hey, from Long Island. So we have some serious package of seeds here. It has 12 varieties of heirloom seeds. We got large cherry tomatoes, cayenne long peppers, golden wax beans, number nine peas, little finger carrots, evergreen bunching onions from seeds. Interesting. Summer squash, black beauty zucchini, basil cinnamon, garlic chives, Amish deer tongue lettuce, bull's blood beet, and champion radish. Cool. 80, 30, 50, 40, 325 carrot seeds, 90. Yeah, so hundreds and hundreds of seeds in here. Pretty cool. Definitely something that's always good. It's not really easy to grow things around here in the desert, but it's still good to have that option. Assuming you can get some good compost and get good water flow and things like that for long-term survivability of any event, you're going to have to start some sort of food production. Seeds are definitely one of the best ways to do that. This looks like an actual axe sheath, but it's not. It's some sort of other, because there's no opening for the axe handle. So it's some sort of other piece of equipment or kit in here. From Fremont Knives. Let's see what we got. 
Interesting. It's like an ulu kind of shape. Very, very sharp. It even warns me on there. Caution, sharp. And it seems like it's very, very sharp. I don't even know what you call that. I would call this, it looks like an ulu, but it's not the same shape. Or an ulu is sort of uh, symmetrical, and this isn't. It's got a little plastic sheet to come with it. And that's what this is. It definitely a some kind of chopping or slicing tool. Very unique. I've never seen one like this before. You can slide it in there. I like that this sheath has some rigidity to it as well, so it'll stay open for you. I'm not sure what they call that. I'm interested to look and see what they call that. A Fremont Knives Farson Blade for skinning critters, William McCaslin said. Interesting. Definitely seems sharp enough to do that. So this seems like a homesteading is the theme for this one. We got an axe, we got seeds, we got processing animals for meat and whatnot. Definitely seems like homesteading is the theme. A classic Kuxa cup, handcrafted wood cup. I call that Mortal Kombat. Me too. <laughs> Pretty cool looking. Very lightweight wooden cup bowl with some finger holes in it. Kind of old timey. Definitely sticks with the whole like a uh, rustic homesteading theme. So we'll see what they actually call it. Cool, yes indeed. And that was the Cooksa cup, handcrafted wood cup. Pretty cool. Coffee kindling. Light, sit back, enjoy. Indoor, outdoor fireplaces, campfires, fire pits, charcoal grills, wood fires, and charcoal only. So these are actual little fire starting cups. That I guess was put, it smells like like ash, honestly, like smoke. I guess it, I don't know why it's called coffee kindling. Maybe because they look like a coffee cup. Three fire starter three pack, but maybe they smell like coffee or something. What are the wires for? These are actually wicks. It's a fire starter. It's a three pack of these little fire starting cups. So whatever this substance is in there, looks kind of like. So, oh, it feels waxy, some kind of waxy substance. So maybe it's like a candle, reusable fire starter. I don't know, but it smells just like campfire smoke. Let's see what the literature says. Enjoy 15% off your next order with code COFFEE15. Made with, okay, here we go. It's made with 100% recycled coffee grounds and soy wax. So it's just, you can see that picture. It is a little fire starter. They're fairly large, so I would imagine this better burn for a long ass time to justify carrying something that big to start one fire. But certainly for indoor fireplaces or something maybe where you have to start with larger pieces of wood, you don't want to start with tiny pieces of kindling. You could use something like this and start some bigger logs. So it's vegan. It might be vegan. How much is this monthly subscription? The Battle Box, um, I believe it's $150 for the Pro Plus, which is to get everything in here. There's different subscriptions levels, so you can get some of the things without having to pay the full price. Usually you can knock off a chunk by not getting like the knife of the month if you're not, if you don't need that, and knock a pretty big chunk off the price. I think that you can get a, pretty much everything else for like a hundred bucks a month, but I don't remember exactly. Check out the website. It's BattleBox with no E, so B-A-T-T-L-B-O-X. I've been really happy with all these. Where's the lesbian flannel shirt? Maybe it's in the bottom. This is a Lord and Field premium wood carving tools. What's up, John Bibb? And this comes in a little satchel. You know, it's really interesting because I was actually looking online. I've been watching some videos on batoning, and I was thinking it would be easier to make, or not easier, but fairly easy 
to design a tool specifically for some kind of light batonic so you didn't have to use your your knife to bang on it. And one of the things I came up with was some kind of curved blade that you could just kind of, instead of having to hack into a log at the very uh, center of it and then split it into pieces, or even at the edge, just splitting it, you could get some kind of curved blade and shave off. And I kind of imagined something about this shape that you could use and just peel off slivers, which you could do that with a sharp regular knife too. But this is specifically designed for wood carving as you can see, for hand wood carving. There's other types of wood carving tools that use a wooden mallet to, uh, to tap on. These are designed for hand wood carving. Here you go, another little straight bladed carving knife. And here's basic whittling knife. And it's a three three set, and the um, the bag it comes in actually can hold four. So if you have something else, you can put in there as well. Pretty cool. For carving bowls, yeah, for bowls and hollowed out spots of any uh, wood carving. Uh, project that you have. Here is some kind of canvas bag. Maybe it's a collection pouch. It's a pretty heavy duty canvas, as you can see. It almost looks like, oh, it's probably for the axe. Would be my guess. Has a shoulder strap in it, some kind of um, almost like a sheath or a shoulder strap for the axe would be my guess. I'll have to see what exactly they say. Let's see what we got. My guess is something like that, and then you can attach the buckle here and to the bottom. Bad internet connection, anyone else having issues? There's nothing I can do about it on my end. Sorry, it's just what I got if, if you're having issues. Pretty cool. I like the heavy duty kind of olive drab canvas, real leather straps. Yeah, I do like that a lot for the ax. Really cool kind of old school woodsman trapper looking setup. The, the um, shoulder strap is a much more modern kind of seatbelt nylon material, but uh, this, you probably want that too with leather, might stretch or be not quite as uh, resilient. Leather's pretty tough though, but this stuff is damn near invincible. Awesome, I really like that. So the last item here, might be another knife. This is by this, the Lord and Field Company. A few of the things in this box are by that company. They might be BattleBox exclusive because I think I've looked up and they don't really have their stuff easily available for sale elsewhere. Top three prepper items, food, water, and uh, protection of some kind. This looks like a kit for making a knife. Blaze your own trail, it's called. Frontiersman Survival Knife How-To Guide. So it might be some sort of kit for actually making, which they've had similar items like that before. That's some, it smells like cedar. It's weird, it smells really strongly of cedar, even though it's a pretty cool leather strap here. Got a medium sized ferro rod with a striker. The striker has. I don't ever use this part of them. That doesn't seem to work as well for me. And this one has very rounded edges and a coating on it. It seems like it would make it fairly slick. See how round that edge is? That's going to make it hard to actually get any sparks off this thing. Oh, there we go. He's got to push really hard. 
but it does work. Maybe the handle is cedar. It looks like micarta, but we'll check it out in a second. What's up? Let's talk about prepping. Thanks for stopping in. Going over to Battle Box. Just got this sweet knife here. It smells very distinctly like cedar. Definitely a hefty blade. Look at the thickness on that. It's got some sort of pin in the handle, and I'm not sure exactly. It's just a stashing point for an Allen wrench, so you can take off the scales if you want. Maybe this not cedar. It's hard to tell, but it's got a, a very distinct, very, very sharp. And they also have a notch here with much more of an aggressive, you know, totally bright angle edge there for the ferrosium rod, which is better because you'd never want to use the front because mostly because it, it's a high, high risk of cutting yourself. But um, also because it can just mess up your blade and it'll maybe be too aggressive with how much it takes off your rod. So using the back of a knife, most you can use the flat part. It's great when they have a specific setup like that. This isn't, this is not a hollow. Um, it just has that one little hollowed out area, which I think is a gimmick because you're not going to walk around with this thing. Like it's, there's nothing keep, there's no retention for it. So eventually it's going to pop out like it just. So I don't know if that's supposed to be able to or supposed to make you able to make a new handle on, you know, out in the field or whatever and change it easily if you want to. That'd be a pretty tall task unless you brought your wood carving tools. Yeah, it could be to remove the scales to use it as a spear. Good point. Although the handle design isn't really set up for that unless there is maybe some other voids in the metal here that would allow you to lash it on a little more easily. That's a good uh, good idea though. It could potentially be the case. There was a paper with it. Where did I set that? Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's apparently there is built in things into the handle. So we'll see, there's supposed to be built in secret inside. So we'll see what we got. Let's see what side they have it on. So I'll take a second to un undo this. See what you guys have any comments. There's a motivating message engraved underneath. Yeah. It says on a long enough timeline, the survival rate of everything drops to zero. And that's supposed to be calming in your moment of despair. Realize that no one makes it out of life alive anyway. So quit trying so hard. Or it has a message from the aliens. We'll see. Either way. Ranger band on it. I still think the idea of storing the Allen wrench in the handle on a knife you're actually going to use when there's no specific retention is less than ideal. Mostly just seems cool. But you would almost certainly lose this thing. But with these Allen wrenches, this one doesn't honestly fit in there very well. It's going to say I'm beautiful. Oh, shucks. My mom always did say I was special. Sorry, this is kind of boring. I'm trying to show you guys what's inside this, but it's there. We go. We've got one out. We'll do the other one here in a second. What else we got? It is what it is. It is indeed. People, not everyone uh, agrees that it is what it is, but it do. So, got to keep that in mind. There, I fat fingered it. So we'll keep this going. See if it's worth the wait. I don't know why I'm struggling so mightily to turn a little Allen wrench. Got the butterfingers today. It says help him trap in the Chinese sweatshop inside. There was some. Uh, I don't know if it was a myth, but someone had like a Chinese newspaper show up in their shipping container that someone wrote something like that on. I think it was a prank. Can you start making 30 second summary videos on TikTok? I don't know what TikTok is. If I remember, I'll look into it. Who makes that beastie knife? This was another one by Lord and Field. And they have um, 
this battle box had some a sweet axe in it too, which I'll show the late arrivals in a second. Not normally mechanically challenged. I'm trying not to drop this knife on me and also trying to keep talking so that you guys don't just watch me screw this thing for and this tiny this Allen wrench is really small too and the screws themselves are not incredibly deep. All right. So this is the inside of the knife. It has spearheads in it. So let's talk about prepping was at least somewhat right. Interesting. It has a magnet as well to keep them in place, I guess. So we'll take those out. And then you've got two little arrowheads or spearheads. They're pretty robust, nice and thick. And you can see the angular point they have on there. Definitely could work to spear some things. And supposedly this, where is it? These are supposed to be able to be used for a divot for your bow drill. And this is a vault, which I think is just packed with some kind of tissue paper for you to put. I don't know, what is this? No, it might be some kind of fire starter. I don't know if you can see that, but it has a couple fish hooks in there. So if this isn't fish in line, that would be pretty nonsensical. And I believe this is another uh, batter or mat battery magnet on that side. Pretty interesting. What does this knife safety speak of? Yeah, exactly. It's watching. Uh, speaking of, let's talk about prepping. He's flipping his knives all over the place. It's like, oh, oh slapping them against his hand. I'm not. Uh, Necessarily that brave. I'm trying to figure out what this looks like a fucking stash of cocaine or something. This might be what created that smell. I don't know. I think it's just a small pack of tissue paper that you could use as compressed cotton swab that you could use as a fire starter. So, um, definitely unique to have. Yeah, right. I got the special box, the marked one that was supposed to get pulled out the pallet. It's definitely kind of dumb to have fish hooks and no fishing line. Now, there are, of course, some, you know, you could use the inside of some paracord or, you know, even things from your threads from your clothes, maybe. Yeah, I have to sniff that and I'll fail, my, fail a drug test if I have to take one. So that's the pretty cool. The magnet holds it in place then for you, and also takes the spot that you can use for. They have two different ones. One flat. This is the one that's supposed to be a divot for a bow drill for the handle. I don't know how well that would hand up to actual use or maybe destroy your knife handle. Who knows? Yeah, I might have just roofied myself. But for those of you who um, showed up. A little late, the battle box included this sweet axe and this sweet axe canvas kind of uh, scabbard. Pretty awesome. I'm stoked. I had a couple wood carving tools and a, uh, some seeds, some kind of ulu skinning knife. But this is definitely a unique, not a bad uh, little knife here. But they needed to not have fish hooks if they're just gonna not have fishing line. But if you wanna buy fishing, survival fishing equipment, get on my mailing list because my survival fishing kits are almost ready to go. I'm still sorting out some supply issues on a couple of the items to make sure they can, they're can they sized properly to fit in the tin. That's been my biggest issue. It's not necessarily sourcing the stuff that I need, but getting it in formats and sizes that will actually all fit. Because I'm packing this thing with gear, guys. It's going to be fucking awesome. It's going to be the best one that is out there for sure. And I've looked around to see what they have. It's not something that there's actually a lot of, which is one of the things that made me decide to do a fishing kit to begin with. It's because there's not a lot. And uh, this one's going to be way better than any of the others that I've seen. 
So get on the mailing list. Now we know where the knife was so thick. Exactly. They had to make a thick blade so you could have all that crap crammed in there. Interesting take on the you know, alternative to the hollow handled survival knife, which I have warned people against. You know, this is obviously something that you can't put quite as many things in it, but the knife still has a lot more integrity. I would probably take those out, take everything out as soon as you realize you were in a survival situation and then put your knife back together. That way you're not having to do this somewhere where you might lose, or if you lose the tool later, you already have the pieces out, things like that. In an emergency, obviously, if you um, even lost the scales, the uh, knife is still going to be functional. It's fairly thick. You could wrap it up with the, some paracord or some cloth or whatever, but there's it back together. I really do like this style of uh, leather sheath. And it's even got a spot for the ferrosium rod. You can get rid of this if you're keeping with the knife because you can use the knife itself. So I'm a fan of that. Pretty cool. And also, if you guys missed the wooden bowl, pretty cool. Also, or this one's by Kook. It's called a Kooksa cup. What's your opinion on survival box? I don't think I have ever received or reviewed a survival box. There was one that I used to do called survivalist box, but they are no longer uh, in business, I don't think. Survival boxes. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, ever got a survival box, so I have no opinion on it. Not sure. You'd have to check it out yourself. The sheath is that. Yeah, I really do like that sheath. And overall, I do like that the size of the knife, the feel of it, things like that. I think the inside stuff is mostly a gimmick. Um, you could probably use the arrowheads, but the little space vault, that's it's too tiny to be useful. And I mean, you're going to be amazed when you see how much fishing, survival fishing gear I have in this tiny little tin when these come available. So there's no reason to have like two hooks in something like this when you can put basically the size of a dip can in your bag in your truck, whatever, bug out bag, survival kit, keep one in your uh, bug out vehicle. And uh, there's no reason to try and cram a couple measly little hooks into a knife. But I like that. And I showed you guys, I got seeds, big packet of heirloom seeds, hundreds of seeds of different kinds of plants in there for maintaining food supply long into the apocalypse. And then of course, as some of you have already seen, this very, very sharp Ulu style skinning knife by Fremont Knives, which I've never heard of. I don't know if they make other designs as well, but it looks, the sheath is similar to like a, an ax sheath with no opening for the handle. Pretty cool. Love the ax, it's a keeper for sure. Definitely. There's no way I'm getting rid of this thing. I, any one of these is ideal for home defense. Good to go. Awesome stuff. Once again, very happy with the stuff in the battle box. The uh, These are a little weird, these fire starters. I think as far as fire starters go, I don't see – I'd have to use them. So obviously keep that in mind. I have not used these yet. But these coffee, they're made out of used coffee grounds and soy oil or some shit like that. It seems very large. So unless it burns for an incredibly long time, it um, – it doesn't seem like it'd be any better than a candle or something. I mean, I'm sure the whole thing kind of immolates once you light it. And it might be good for starting larger pieces of wood on fire. I'll have to see. That I don't know. But if you're just starting a normal kindling, it seems like a waste to have a big thing like this just to start one fire. But it might be good for something like a fire, like a homestead type situation. Not necessarily a bug out bag, but you just need to get a fire started in, in your actual um, house, like a fire fireplace or a wood stove where it's a little harder to get in there, things like that. And you just need something that's going to burn for a little while. Then it might be useful for something like that. Pretty cool. Fremont knife is based on an Indian stone knife. Interesting. I need to start my seeds tomorrow. I'm late. Yeah, it's going to be the time of year, depending on where you're at. Seeds could be, could you send, use one on video for us? Are you, who are you talking to? Um, I'm Spangles. Yes. Tomatoes and, pre and peppers here in Colorado. Don't forget to give Eric a thumbs up, folks. Thank you, William. That's cool. Hit the thumbs up button if you like it. And if you don't, <laughs> jog on. Stacking tuna. I just bought a lot of tuna. They have this. I got to tell you guys, I'm a huge sucker 
for the Safeway Vons Albertsons Monopoly game. Can't get enough of it. So I, I what I do is it, it comes around once a year and they have, you know, they give tickets for different things you get. You can win things. You can potentially win giant prizes, which of course you never do, but you can actually say get points for getting free gift cards, small cash prizes, which I have won some of that, some of that and a lot of free stuff. So I just buy a lot of canned goods that I know I'm going to use eventually anyways. They store basically indefinitely, so you don't have to worry about buying. Because what I don't like doing is getting tricked by these games. The whole purpose of these games is to get people to buy things that they wouldn't have otherwise bought. And um, I wouldn't necessarily have otherwise bought all this stuff right now, but eventually I will all use it all. So I'm not going to binge on green beans if I have a couple extra cans of green beans in there. It's great for preparedness purposes, increase your stockpiles, and get to play a little game along with that as well. So I did just buy some tuna. All that was to say that I actually did just buy a couple cans of tuna because they had ex you get an extra ticket if you bought the tuna, and it was on say they had like a twenty five cents off each can thing. So it's pretty great. Costco sardines, yeah, I actually like the little cans of oysters are really good too. I eat them with some horse horseradish, and I I vastly prefer raw oysters. Mm. I'm going to get those for some of my birthday coming up. I'm going to have one of those all-you-can-eat oyster places. I try to do that a couple times a year, all-you-can-eat raw oysters. Mm, yeah, that's where it's at. I can eat like 30 to 50 of them. 30 is nothing. I can eat like 50 or so usually if I go in there on an empty stomach, which is interesting because I'm not a, not a huge eater, but oysters are so tiny. Then when you add in the fact that they're kind of spaced out the way you eat them because they take a little work and everything, it always appears to be much more food than it actually is. Like if you eat like 20 or 30 oysters, you're probably talking about a piece of meat, like the size of maybe a baseball. And, uh, but the pile of shells and trash and everything is like the whole table. So it looks like you've just had some magnificent, monstrous 10 person feast, even though it's really not that ludicrous. And I, uh, I wait till that you can get like a uh, dollar oysters or something like that. And then just, go to ham on them when I, I just went to canada recently and we went to a place in um vancouver and there was right on the water and they had dollar oysters but it was canadian dollars they had like one hour it was dollar oysters for this one particular hour we were like right there on time and they wrote canadian dollars too so it was like 60 cents an oyster and i was just like ah delicious very good very fresh too I don't eat tuna a lot. It's very, tuna doesn't, I mean, I won't want to say it's tasteless because it has a very distinct taste, but it, it's very like lean kind of taste, kind of dry, even though it's very physically moist, the, the taste is kind of like dry. And I, I like it in things. I don't really eat it by itself. So, or I, if you put a little bit of barbecue so sauce or something like that on it, it goes a long way, which might seem weird on tuna. And it would be if you're talking about like a big piece of tuna, but like the shredded canned tuna, I put a little sauce on there, barbecue sauce, maybe eat it with some rice or something like that. But yeah, I don't really make casseroles. I don't cook at all. I don't do any cooking. The only actual cooking that I do is I cook steaks because there's just no other way to, you just got to, you have to cook it. And I cook them barely. I do like a Pittsburgh sear and they're basically raw on the inside. I will cook eggs. I will cook bacon. I occasionally will cook chicken. But most of the time, I just buy the rotisserie chickens because the price is pretty good. But Walmart has the quart, late quarter is like 60 cents a pound. And I'm really trying to save up some money lately. So I'm probably going to switch to that. Maybe get some kind of propane grill, like a cheap uh, yeah, blue steak or Pittsburgh sear or something like that. What's up, Battle Box? Thank you for showing up. I have been telling everyone how much I like the, uh, the boxes. In particular, this time, this axe is great. So it's cool to see you guys swinging by. Thanks for watching. The axe and the sheath, very unique, not something that you see everywhere. And that's what I like about the battle box is not necessarily that anything in here is really that dramatic in and of itself. But like, I wouldn't think I would never even come across something like this, you know, or this, um, this knife or even something like this that initially doesn't seem like I would uh, have too much of a use for like this particular type of fire starter. Maybe when I try this, maybe it'll be fantastic. And I wouldn't have bought it because of my initial impression, but then I get to try it regardless. So definitely love all that, that aspect of not knowing what I'm going to get. Like it was kind of like when I used to buy storage unit lockers, crack it open. That was my the most fun part of doing that, of reselling that stuff was not knowing what I was going to get to dig through in these storage units. 
Will you send oysters in the next box, please? Please do not do that. <laughs> 30 minutes. All right. That is impressive. If these things will legitimately burn for 30 minutes, then that is quite a, uh, a feat. And it also means that if I was in a bug out situation, I would probably split them into four pieces or something like that, which may or may not burn for a quarter of 30 minutes. Who knows how it works? But that, that is I mean, so you could definitely can start some considerably larger or maybe wetter wood, which would give it an advantage over, um, cause I don't think a, if you take something like Instafire, making a mess over here. If you take something like Instafire, you don't need much of it, but I don't think a pile of Instafire that big would burn for 30 minutes. So maybe I'll do a test on these. Cheapest box, yeah, cheapest box at $30. Yeah, if I did, um, so that if it burns for 30 minutes, that would be a definitely advantageous and would be a reason to check them out. So I'll have to do a test on those. And it would per probably be useful for starting things where, like I said, you had to use larger pieces of wood, maybe wetter or inferior wood, or somewhere like a wood stove or fireplace that you have trouble getting into to actually build a, you know, a really good setup for starting a fire with, with a small amount of fire starter. So if you have to dig some kind of Dakota hole fire or a wood stove or a fireplace or something interesting situation like that, those might be good for something like that. I will test them. Yeah, that sounds good. Especially for, or the grill. That's what, yeah, something like that I mentioned. No on 911. I'm not sure what you're talking about there. Apparently Christmas cake can last years if you had plenty of brandy. Are you talking about the fruit cake? Because that's always been the joke that it lasts forever. Half because of the way it's made, half because no one would ever eat it and would just pass it around re-gifting it from family member to family member. So, pretty interesting. What can I get for $30? I need some for the guys watching. Here, um, if you guys haven't, I dropped my little sheet because I'm very disorganized. But the... Oh, there it is. Sorry, guys. Amateur hour over here. This shows you what you would have gotten in each level of box. So, you still get all of this stuff. It just depends on which part of it like i said the um you can if you're not really worried about getting the knife of the month which in this case was the uh this one right here then you can just go right down to the pro box because that's the pro plus just adds the usually just adds the knife of the month so if you got the pro box which is the next level down you would have gotten the axe the fremont knife the wood carving tool set the heirloom seeds, the wooden cup, the fire starters, and the axe sling. So if you already had an axe, you could still use that. And if you started, and so if you didn't want the knife or the axe, then you would have gotten everything else with the second tier box. And then you take out the two other blades, and then you would have gotten the uh, the four items there. So I'll leave that up there for a second so you guys can look at it. And this shows the value. It doesn't actually show the, that's not the price of the box. That's the um, retail value if you were to buy all that stuff. So you're definitely making a savings on that. So that Eric's got his box before I did. That's <laughs> what you get. Was the Frontiersman the axe? The Frontiersman is the survival knife. This one that has the arrowheads in it, the fire starter, and that. The, the axe is called the Old Army Axe. So you can see it says Old Army there. And definitely digging it, especially with this uh, sling, which if you'll notice has an additional kind of outer area there which you could maybe even put a smaller hatchet in it couldn't be a machete because there's no retention strap or anything like that so anything that didn't have it could be a mini pickaxe crowbar axe something like that another hatchet so you have two levels that you can put the something like an axe in or a breaching tool of some kind maybe who knows but this slides in and actually has the bottom on it whereas this part does not have a bottom so you, it's open on both sides so there's all sorts of stuff you could use that for but i really this is really cool looks like something something that a mad trapper would have on when he's running from the canadian mounties which if you haven't seen a movie called um oh what is it death hunt i think death hunt it is about the mad trapper starring charles bronson they changed the story qu quite dramatically to make him a good guy and uh, quite a sympathetic character, which is not necessarily the way it was for, you know, not surprising to someone nicknamed the Mad Trapper. 
but it's still a really good movie. And they, they, they follow the general story arc of chain of events of what happened in that story, which you should watch it because it's one of my favorite stories right up there with the Killdozer. Mad Trapper story is insane and you need to read about it. Watch Frontier on Netflix. Awesome show. I have, you know, is that the one with Aquaman? What's his name? Momoa, Jason Momoa. I am so far behind on these shows. That's a problem. Someone was like, uh, yes, okay, good. I have to check that out. I'm so far behind on all these shows, but I will say that my preferred method of watching these shows is to let there be a couple seasons build up and then binge because that's how I watch shows. I binge, <coughs> excuse me. And if I only have one season, man, that can be painful. You get through the whole thing and then you're just like, if it is that good, then you're like, oh, I want more. And waiting a whole year or whatever is torturous. So my preferred method is to have at least three seasons of a show. Um, Frontier's been out for a little while, if I'm not mistaken. Now i got to go ID and IMDB it. This could be my Battle Box Frontier style axe. So I'm going to IMDB Frontier and see what we got. Is that water in the jerry cans? These are water. These are gasoline cans, which is I don't have gasoline in them because when I def any full gas cans, I don't keep in my house for obvious safety reasons. The one thing I'm trying to figure out, because it's cold right now, five seasons, that's perfect for binging. Mm. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out as it gets so damn hot here in the summer that I'm trying to come up with a safer way to store the gasoline rather than just putting it in the garage. Because obviously the garage is cooler than just setting it outside, but it gets up to 110, 112, 115 even degrees here in the summer. So in the garage, it will be close to that. It's out of the direct sunlight, but it still gets pretty hot in there. It'll probably be 90 to 100 degrees, which, you know, it's not going to spontaneously combust at those temperatures, but they can swell, you know, the cans. And uh, so I'm looking for a method for that. So if you guys have any ideas about gas storage in extreme temperatures, I'm open to suggestions. So I actually have a video I'm going to be doing soon on rocket stove. I showed you that little one I made, a trailer with 250 gallons of diesel, 150 gallons of gas and pumps. That's a legit setup. That's what I would love to have. I'm in a kind of a suburban neighborhood right now. Probably wouldn't fly if I even had somewhere to put it. But when I have, I have a, um, now I forgot the, the name of the stove. It is a EcoZoom stove that I've had for years, I think. And I've never actually cracked it open and tested it for you guys. I'll probably use one of these to start that. And we can see, do a double test of these Battle Box coffee kindling fire starters. And the EcoZoom stove. Store my gasoline in the freezer. Okay. Probably not a lot of gasoline then. And I don't think that's really necessary. And if it could cause some issues, if there is any sort of water in the gas, it might cause some sort of bizarre separation. Although if you have water in your gasoline, you're probably gonna have problems to begin with. My dad filled up a gas can with water once and then in a rush filled his Porsche tank up with water. He had them in identical gas cans. That's not smart. It is very difficult to store gas. I mean, it's it's simple, you know, like you fill a can and you stick it somewhere. There's just a lot of considerations that you need to keep in mind. You have legal considerations, safety considerations, physical properties of the gas, you know, spoilage, um, having, I can't even see it, but I have a can of um, Stabil up there, gas stabilizer. Okay, you're just joking. <laughs> Not in the freezer. Uh, yeah. Wanted to smack them for wasting all the time and batteries for AC. Oh my God, are you serious? Who are you talking to, Spangles? I missed whatever in reference. Oh, the second season was a simulated pandemic. Is that talking about the colony? Because we had mentioned the colony on the Prepper Trifecta thing. And uh, I haven't seen the second season. The first season was interesting, but it was definitely too reality show, obviously, mostly scripted. I mean, you, you can't really fake a uh, shit the fan scenario too easily, but diesels for our trucks and tractors. Typically, our power goes out from down trees and needs tractors exactly. Gas is for all of the cars, ATVs, chainsaws, etc. Makes sense. And uh, yeah, I mean, our, when I was in Florida, I haven't lost power here in Vegas yet. And one of the reasons I think that may be the case is I've noticed that a lot of the power lines are subterranean buried versus in Florida. And I'm assuming the reason for that was it's so, the ground first of all in Florida is a lot softer sand. So they're probably not as protected by being underground to begin with. And there's so much water that maybe they would just 
soggy, waterlogged, or more shortages, electricity loss. So anytime we'd have hurricanes and even normal thunderstorms in between, power would go out all the time. Particularly the house I lived at, it would go out at least a couple times a year, two or three times a year. Never really stayed out for more than 24 hours, usually unless it was a serious hurricane. But you got to be ready for that stuff. And like you said, if you're on a big property or anywhere where you will be responsible for removing dead trees and stuff like that, you're going to need either some sort of backup electricity source for an electric chainsaw, which is hard to use because you're tethered by cables. If you have a big property, a gas chainsaw obviously is more powerful and easier to use. Power, or the U.S. power grid is definitely in a uh, sad state. It's actually it's very fragile. And there's a uh, documentary out there called, I think it's called Crumbling America or Disintegrating America. I think it's Crumbling America about just all the different infrastructure in the U.S. How so much of it, especially concrete bridges and things like that, were all built in this big expansion of infrastructure and these big booming times in the 50s and around there. And need so much of it needs to be replaced and there just isn't money to do it. And it, most of it hasn't been replaced. It's going well past the time that it should be replaced and we could be having a really kind of perfect storm of economic collapse type not even if it's a serious economic collapse but economic hardships also coinciding with different types of resource scarcity like chris martinson always talks about and our infrastructure problems all happening at the same time with no money to fix it especially if you're having currency issues i mean like right now the money isn't there for anything that they're doing they're just using money that doesn't exist yeah, the new Green Deal would <laughs> just replace every building in the country. That was part of it. That was definitely loonies. I think part of it was every building in the country is either going to be upgraded or completely rebuilt to meet green standards. Jobs for anyone. Money for people who can't or won't have jobs. Basically, this, this is what I call the Pedro platform. Because if you remember from Napoleon Dynamite, the Pedro character, when he's running for student council president or whatever it is, he just gets up to the podium and just says, vote for me and all your wildest dreams will come true. And that was it. That was his whole platform. <laughs> so AOC has the officially launched her Pedro platform. And uh, that's exactly what it is. All your wildest dreams will come true. Everything's good. We're going to get our electricity from jelly bean fields, no fossil fuels. Everyone will have jobs. It's just the big rock candy mountain. Yeah, the Pedro platform, exactly. <laughs> it's so, it's literally what they're saying. I mean, they're having a little more detail, but not much. They don't explain how any of this stuff is going to happen. She is Pedro. Yeah, it's it's wild. And I saw someone post, I think one of my relatives actually posted something recently about, uh, yeah, that is a good idea for sure. Maybe I should make that. Um, how they're talking about how we need to switch over to solar or force switching over to the, they didn't even mention solar specifically, but getting away from fossil fuels. They're saying that like everyone's saying there's a war on coal, but no one said there was a war on blacksmiths or a war on horse farmers. We got rid of horses. That's because they're actively trying to stop using coal and these fossil fuels without an alternative. No one had to tell people to stop using blacksmiths and to start using cars instead of horses because it was an already available, vastly superior technology, which we don't have for fossil fuels yet. In fact, I've been very interested. I'd actually like to see if I can get a talk to Chris Martinson or somebody like that about the fact that you're seeing such a huge push to switch to electric cars with some manufacturers even saying they're going to stop producing gasoline models within the next 10 or 15 years. But there's no way to replace all that electricity or all that power generation. Do you know how um, energy dense, like hydrocarbon fuel is like gasoline and the amount of energy that you're getting out of a gallon of gas versus what it takes to make that with some other form, you know, and they're not, they don't want to build any more nuclear power plants. Thorium power plants are an interesting kind of alternative, but we're like 10 years. There hasn't been ground broken on a single thorium plant, if I'm not mistaken. So we're at least like 10 years away from any of that nonsense. Solar is great, but it's, takes so much acreage of solar even with the new you know more improved you know versus 10 years ago or whatever and a huge initial outlay of um uh expenditure of energy and money to build all that solar there's just no way to replace all this so i'm really interested to see what people actually think is going to replace all this electricity usage Battle boxes, them say we don't have enough dollars for the wall, but free college for everyone unless we build the entire country. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, someone ran the numbers on the five or 10 billion or whatever Trump's asking for the wall. And it, it's it's the equivalent of like a $50 s 
spending on when you have like a thirty thousand dollar a year budget. So it's it's kind of nonsense, and it's even surpassed monthly, if I'm not mistaken, by individual states spending on illegal immigration, different t- types of transfer payments, and things like that. So it's it's not about the money. Let's just put it that way. The the government is spending way more money than they have every uh, year anyway. Certainly not about the money. It's about that they want either the votes, new votes to come in, or it's just an ideological thing. Some people are true believers. They just really think this is the way things should be done. Other people certainly are doing it for an ulterior motive, but it's not good. Crazy Cortez. Yeah. I will. Yeah, it's funny because people are making the same mistake with her, though, that the left made with Trump and realizing that pointing out that she, how crazy she is about all this stuff and how dumb she is, it's, it's pointless because she didn't elect herself. I mean, she's elected because there's enough people that think this way also. So pointing out how dumb she is isn't going to do anything. Just like pointing out to us that Trump was not presidential is meaningless because we're not interested in someone who's just going to do the th- way, things the way they've always been done. And using a couple of, you know, bad words or just being gruff and kind of boorish or whatever in uh, in general is not really something that was our big concern when there's so many issues with the country. And But people are making the same mistake with her. Like they're using, they're trying to use uh, logic to point out why she's wrong about things. And when she's speaking purely in rhetoric, just like I'm saying, she's using the Pedro platform. Do you really think that all these people that look at that list of things, if you point out how difficult or impossible it's going to be to do them, you really think that's going to change their mind? I make the same argument about people who um, always get all bent out of shape when someone says assault rifle. Like they say, oh, this isn't a a real assault rifle, or they called a, um, you know, any random gun, bolt action gun, they'll call it assault rifle. And they're like, that's not assault rifle. Um, Technically, if you look here, assault rifle, I'm like, dude, you're right, but who cares? That that doesn't matter. Like, you think even if you really convince them that this isn't an assault rifle, that they're not going to want to ban it anymore? It's pointless. They're speaking purely in rhetoric and trying to explain the finer points of definitions of proper gun terminology and whether or not you can actually get a chainsaw bayonet is a waste of breath. You have to realize what we're actually up against here. I want to compliment you on the video on the sweet potatoes. I did it and grew tons from grocery store bought yammers. Cool. That was an old video. And I don't know if you saw, I knit, I tried to an experiment growing potato runners from a aquaponics bed and I knew that the tubers themselves would probably not grow that well in the gravel under you know partially submerged but I had them kind of grow out into a barrel of like leaves there and it didn't really the the runners grew like crazy I didn't really get any potatoes out of it I think because I only had leaves if I had real soil down there then I think they would have grown a lot better and so if you're going to grow real soil anyway maybe you don't need to have the runner coming out of the aquaponics but it's certainly a good way for them to get a lot of nutrition they grow really quickly, grow easily, and it's probably a good idea to have some of those runners on hand simply because once you harvest from an aquaponics, you're, uh, you might not have enough plants left there to clear all the waste out of the water for the fish. So putting something in there like the sweet potatoes that's going to grow quickly might be a short-term solution to get that back into balance. Also, I will say that things like mint, the mint and the rosemary, no, rosemary and uh, basil, basil is what it was grows like gangbusters like the roots would just take over the thing the basil especially so those grow like crazy in aquaponics but you actually have to be careful they grow too well and the roots will just clog everything up excuse me what about the navy's algae to fuel project i know you can make different sort of biofuels out of algae and any sort of biomass if you have the correct correct process i don't know about the navy's specific project but it's interesting Way too much tribalism. If you're afraid, and that's that's what uh, I've tried to explain to people too when they talk about the possibility of a civil war potential. Is we don't have the demographic breakup that would make a two-sided civil war even possible. There's not two sides, and uh, there there's going to be conflict of some kind, but it's not going to be a two-sided civil war. There's just going to be um, possibly balkanization or breakup of the country, if not just increased civil unrest until something. Serious happens. There's a guy that wants to turn duckweed into a renewable energy source. Yeah, I've seen that. It's actually, did you know that here's a little tidbit of trivia knowledge that duckweed is the smallest flowering plant in the world. Each individual little thing on there is the smallest flowering plant. And you can eat duckweed too. It has apparently has a lot of protein in it. And I think one of the episodes of Doomsday Preppers, which I haven't actually seen much of that show, 
But I do remember one episode where the guy was growing duckweed and for eating or feeding to, you can feed it to animals, chickens, ducks, things like that. And so it's, it's a pretty interesting plant and you can just grow it in stagnant water a lot of times. It's pretty cool. If you're in the right, you know, zone, climate zone for it, it's definitely something to look into. Living in my mom's basement, it's one way to live your life. I hope you're at least not having to pay rent. <laughs> everyone versus Washington, D.C. would be the Civil War. No, I mean, it's not, not everyone's mad at Washington, D.C. The number 16 election, there's, there's millions of people who think that they aren't doing the things that they're doing enough, you know? Yeah, duckweed feeds on the, on the poo water. So it can help, help keep water from being stagnant. It can actually help sort of physically block even tiny amounts of water, though. What's up, just in time prepping? How you doing? So I missed anything. Yeah, but if you guys, if you've missed, I'll run one more time because we got 28 people in here, the battle box of the month. We got an awesome old army axe with a really kind of sweet canvas sheath. And it also includes a shoulder strap, which I have dropped here. So I'm not going to grab that. We have a box of Patriot seeds. You can see there's about two, four, six, eight, ten, ten or twelve. Oh, it says right there. Twelve varieties of various sorts of heirloom vegetables. So you know you don't have to deal with any sort of bizarre GMO stuff. And the most important thing about the heirloom ones is, is a lot of times straight up hybrid seeds are not necessarily GMO, except in the strictest sense. They're obviously, you know, um, selectively bred. But the problem with a lot of those is not that there's anything weird about the fruit itself, other than that they're sterile and they don't produce seeds for future generations. So the biggest thing about, they're usually more resilient, which is nice, bigger yields, things like that. Because a lot of these ones will be, the heirloom varieties will be a lot closer to they were, to the actual plants were hundreds of years ago. So they'll be smaller. They won't be as sweet if they're a fruit, you know, they'll be a little more susceptible to certain types of bugs and things like that. But they can, um, you can use the seeds from them and produce generation after generation after generation. There's a guy that wants, oh yeah, I saw the duckweed thing long here. Wait till next month's box. I'm excited. I, I don't, there's, I don't think there's been a single box that I've been disappointed with. Obviously every box is not going to have every single item that you're totally stoked at, depending on what your interests are. But I've kept almost everything that's in here, with the exception of a few things that I've given away to you guys. And then there's this little, Ulu knife from Fremont Knives, which is a skinning knife, razor sharp. It's actually busted right through the, the tape they have on there, which someone mentioned is in um, supposed to be modeled after a Native American flint or some sort of indigenous people's flint knife. And it comes in this cool little thing here. We have a cool little wooden kooks a cup, cup bowl, soup bowl. And you can use it to model your own that you carved out with the wood carving tools. Very cool. And then I already mentioned these fire starters a few times with BattleBox just told us these are supposedly supposed to be able to burn for up to 30 minutes. So that changes things. We'll check them out. Because initially I was like, that's a little big to have one fire starter, but if it burns for 30 minutes, then that's pretty legit. So we'll do a test on those. So thanks for watching that guys, yeah. Female, female unboxers. <laughs> what, what are you saying? I'm not pretty enough? Got to show, show more cleavage here? I'll try. I'll work on it, guys. I'm doing the 100 push-ups a day challenge, so these pecs will be popping soon. And then I'll get a few more fans. It's not a makeup box or a nail polish box. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's each their own. You don't want everybody looking all gnarly during the apocalypse, so it's cool to have some makeup and stuff lying around for the ladies. I got no beef with that. But yeah, I, this is a, I do like very simple outdoor bushcraft knives like this. This is called the Frontiersman by Lord and Field. And I think more knives need to have this specifically, which is a very unfinished edge notch for striking your ferrosium rods. And I love these leather sheaths like this. There was a Udemy knife in one of the, I think it's Udemy was a brand, in one of the uh, recent boxes as well. They had a very similar design sheath, and I really like that one as well. Same kind of type of knife, sort of, where it has a um, 
you know, nothing fancy looking, but nice thick hunk of steel in there with the micarta scales, which I'm a big fan of micarta. For how smooth and comfortable they are, they, it offers a lot of grip. And this one specifically is, has a kind of swelled handle there, so your hand's not going to slide off the back of it. 100 push-ups a year challenge? <laughs> I've been doing 100 a day every day for February. In fact, to 9 o'clock now, I'm going to be doing mine soon here. It's going well so far. I've hit them every day. All right. Yes, I know I'm actually looking for new bucks. What's your EDC knife? Um, it depends. A lot of times lately I've been carrying a Spyderco. I forget the actual model name. It's a slip joint. And it's the reason I've been carrying that one in particular is because it's under the limit. I set it out there. It's under the limit for what is allowed to be legally carried concealed in Las Vegas. Because Las Vegas is unique in that you can open carry any knife you want. No restrictions. But to conceal it, it has to be under you know a certain size unless you get a concealed carry permit specifically for that which is not shall issue it's may issue so you have to like ask the sheriff if you can get it and i don't know i have to research this i don't know if you have to ask for each individual type of knife like hey can i carry this one can i carry this one or if you can just ask for a different permit that allows you to carry pretty much any knife concealed i'm waiting my um concealed carry permit is in the mail they're taking their sweet time and so I'm going to wait till I have that because then when you go to the sheriff, it, it would be kind of ridiculous for them to not in my mind, you know, obviously I can't make them, but it would seem ridiculous to me for them to not issue a concealed knife license for someone who can already carry a concealed handgun, but maybe they won't. But if that, if that's the case, then I'll just walk around with a giant knife, but you can't, you know, like businesses are allowed to have the rules against this. There's a lot of the bars and casinos will not let you in if you have a big knife showing or even i've been kicked out of places or told i can't come in with just the pocket knife clip showing on a little knife got kicked out of a place in phoenix i've been in, in a, the bar for like an hour and the bouncer came up and was like is that a knife and i wasn't going to be a wise ass and be like oh you're very observant i just said yes and they're like oh you can't have been you need to leave and i was like dude i've been in here for like an hour and i was like i would never i would never drink here anyway smash my mug on the no exactly i just left there's no reason to cause problems. If people want to have these dumb rules, then just take your business elsewhere. And that's what I did. There's plenty of places around here that, that don't care about that kind of stuff. But when I'm going down to the strip and whatever, I don't want to have to deal with that. So most of the time, I'll still take it, drop it inside my pocket. Very few of, of places around here will physically um, check you. You know, they just, if they see it. You can't have, and I've even seen one where the guy said, you can't have that showing. Like he didn't want me to see, he didn't want to see it. So I was like, okay, put it in my pocket. But I have, you have no idea how many times I've had to like stash knives outside of um, national monuments. And because I've done a bunch of traveling across the US and I always, always, always have a knife with me unless I'm actually not allowed to. You will very rarely, I think if you come up to me, check me. Because unless I'm doing some sort of sporting event or something where I could injure myself by having a knife on me, you know, from running, tripping or whatever, maybe swimming or something like that. Uh, and, or I'm somewhere where I can't have one, like an airport, a courthouse, a school, things like that then I will have one on me almost 100% of the time. I can probably count the, one, on one hand the days that I have left the house without my knife and for some reason other than I wasn't allowed to. And I, if I physically feel like naked, it's like literally like I'm standing there without pants on. It's, it's like the phone, the feeling when you're like, oh my God, I left my phone or my wallet, but it's like 10 times worse. I'm like, whoo, and I, I, it's crazy. It's definitely not a fear thing, but it's just like, what am I doing? I don't have my knife. Because it's it's just as much about you know non self defense type stuff as it is about self defense, but that's just the way I feel about knives. Always have one. Battle box is no more new, no more moves, no more moves. <laughs> that is grade A American steel sex appeal, my friend. Pure beef. Just grow an M stash and don't worry about the moves. I'm assuming you mean a mustache. I've actually never shaved. So you can see how long it's taken me to grow a mustache. For my concealed, it's way, I got my concealed, it's way cool. No one even knows. That's the idea. Like I said, around here, open carry. I could carry wherever I want. And that has its purpose. I absolutely 100% think it should be allowed, but I don't think it should be your go-to. I don't think you just be like, I'm going to the grocery store, and strap a gun on your head. Because it kind of, it changes the dynamic of if you're going to get in a self cement scenario and, and the bad guys know your arm or can see your arm. They, instead of, you know, they might be more surreptitious. They might come behind you and try to grab it or just shoot you right off the bat. 
you know, so I think having a little bit of um, concealability is obviously gives you more options. I've got my concealed. Oh, yeah, I already read that. I got chased out of a Vegas casino at 15 for taking a picture of the betting limits on a table. I had no idea that was frowned upon. Yeah. And that's kind of happened to me years ago as well. Now in the age of smartphones, there's almost no restrictions on having the phones in the casinos. You, if you're on some of the games, you can't have it up on the table because they're worried that you're going to potentially be using the computer aspect of it to do different sorts of calculations or using it at the table. But you can take selfies in the casinos, take pictures of all the stuff, you know, and for the most part, they're extremely, extremely lenient on it now compared to how they were, you know, five or 10 years ago, certainly. It's just, they're, they're so ubiquitous. There's no way you could stop it. And the first, at this point, if they said you couldn't take your phone out and people just go to another casino as people are, you know, addicted to their, they're not gonna not take pictures of themselves. I shaved today's Harry's razor. No Gillette, you say? Oh my God, you bad, you toxically masculine man, you. Gotta have a knife or two. I've, I've carried two knives in a lot of, a lot of times. Especially when I have like one really sweet, like razor sharp one that I'm saving for special self-defense occasions. And then I'll carry a smaller knife that I can use if I actually just gotta hack through something and don't wanna mess with my blades. Lord H, that face you just made. <laughs> Absolutely, people are wired about it too. I carry a switchblade if it was legal. Yeah, switchblades are cool and everything. Some of the automatic, I forget the name of those uh, automatic knives that are really cool, but it's a fear thing that all those rules came about banning them they're they're not any more dangerous if anything they're usually less robust than a simple lock blade knife and for someone who's confident with their knife you can open a regular knife just as quickly you know maybe fractions of a second slower they're just people are just scared of them because of like gangster movies from the 80s and stuff hell with gillette and shaving the end period grow to the floor to the floor to the floor i don't know about that that's a lot of work I have a Hogue Automatic EDC. Cool. Yeah, automatic knives are, are cool too. I do like them. I think that, um, I don't want to say we're gimmick. It's just, it's not necessary. Let's put it that way. It's good if you maybe have like black dexterity in your fingers. It could be a good option to just pop it open, you know, or if you have particularly small or particularly large hands, so a normal size pocket knife might be hard to hold and open and get your fingers out of the way, things like that. I've noticed that with some really small knives. I mean, if you have knives like something like this, this is another tiny one that I have because it's legal to carry almost everywhere. If you, if you're, and my hands are very average sized, believe me, there's no problem. And you know, fingers are hanging off the end and they more than wrap around. So you kind of have to like raccoon paw it to get your uh, fingers out of the way to open it. So it slows you down a little bit. So if you have exceptionally large hands, or like I said, some sort of maybe nerve damage or missing a finger, automatic could be fantastic for that. At least get yourself a thumb stud. A lot of them, um, especially bigger knives, folding knives, you can you can uh, just kind of whip them open. I don't think I have one here to give you an example of, but I might be able to do it with these. The smaller the knife is, the harder it is because you don't get as much momentum with the blade. Yeah, like that. So if you just hold it like this so that the blade is exposed and you can just whip it open. It has to be nice and smooth though, which is one of the reasons I like the Ontario rat folder, but you can do that with a lot. You just have to make sure that you're holding it tight and you don't throw the knife out of your hand. And it's a, it's a kind of a, like a whipping, like almost like you're shaking water off the end of it like that and you'll get used to it. So that's one way to do it fairly quickly but you gotta maintain control of the knife so you don't throw it. But the automatics prevent you from having to do all that. Ren fair, I'm not into the Renaissance fair thing. I've never done that. I'm not quite nerdy enough for that. I do, broken fingers. Yeah, exactly, that could be that could be a problem. Just like I was making it much easier to just hit that button much quicker. Yes, I need something I can whip open. Cool. Well, it's been about an hour, guys. This went much, much longer than I thought it was. I was just planning on doing a really quick um, battle box. I like the new box design as well. It says battle box all over it. And this one looked like it almost looked like that box that the uh, Terminator had the roses in with his hiding, hiding shotgun in it in T2. Kind of cool walking out of the post office with that. So check them out, guys. B-A-T-T-L-B-O-X. Yet to be disappointed. Great gift for 
for for your, the Valentine's Day gift for the prepper in your life. You can buy one-off boxes for most of them. You don't have to do a long-term subscription. Cancel it whenever you need to, different levels. And I've got a big stash of gear now that I'm really happy with. It. A lot of stuff that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of, wouldn't necessarily have you know, got if I hadn't got the battle boxes. That's a shiny blade. Cool, guys. All right, dude. Dudes and dudettes, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos coming here on my channel. Got some cool stuff planned. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Hit the thumbs up button. Thanks, Caleb. See ya.